Welcome back guys. Today, let's take another hard look at what it means to keep a saltwater tank. I've preached before about the absolute necessity of having a quarantine tank, and today, ours paid its weight in gold and saved our display tank from disaster. Our quarantine methods have evolved to doing the following. If the fish was purchased locally, they go immediately into a tank transfer series with ProsiPro. If they show signs of illness, they are also treated with copper before entering the more long-term quarantine with sand and live rock. There's even some corals now. The last batch was monitored for three months before we moved them into the display tank. If the fish, however, was purchased through our other avenue, a reputable online seller with fairly extensive quarantine treatment and acclimation processes, we place them into the long-term quarantine tank on arrival and only remove and treat them if they show signs of illness. This company was recently purchased by a large pet store conglomerate that isn't very well liked for how they handle saltwater fish. And the next order we made from them after that occurred had fish that arrived with flukes. We treated the fish in quarantine and moved forward, considering that every other order we've done with them, five at this point, were fine and we understand that things happen in this hobby. This time though, they sent us something even more alarming. Twelve days ago, we received two new fish from this online retailer to put into quarantine in preparation for the 210 gallon tank that we're building. One of them was a white-tailed bristle-tooth tang, which I have wanted for a very long time. These fish are stunning. The pictures do not do them justice. We named him Pepper. The other is a razor tang, and both fish were put into separate long-term quarantine tanks. It just so happens that Pepper was placed into the quarantine tank where the snowflake clowns are living at the moment. We strongly believe that there is a social aspect to acclimating fish and reducing stress for them. And keeping at least one other fish in the quarantine tank is something we've done a couple of times now. We only risk this when the fish come from this online retailer that we trusted. Striking a balance between medicating as needed but not subjecting fish to harmful chemicals where it isn't is important to us. But it does come with some amount of risk. To give you an idea of how fast this disease moves once it's visible, these videos were taken on Thursday, less than 48 hours ago. These fish appear healthy, active, and are eating well, without a single sign of issue. There was some kind of algae starting to grow in this tank, and the tang was just demolishing it. Fast forward 24 hours to about 5 p.m. on Friday, that was last night, and this is what we saw. The new tang is now covered in spots, and the clownfish are showing them as well, though not to the same extent. I had seen this once before on the maroon clownfish that we lost a long time ago. Day one, he looked just like this. I don't have photos of it, but by day two, he looked more like this. It was very confusing. The hawkfish in the tank with the maroon clown did not suffer at all or ever show signs of illness, but the clown died within three days. That was what we accidentally cross-contaminated into the display tank previously. That cost us many months of worry and work to correct. I still don't know if that incident was ick or velvet, but when I saw this on the tang, we immediately started moving to get them medicated. Of course, these things always happen when you aren't prepared. The water change bucket, that almost always has fresh mixed salt water waiting for the next water changes, was sitting in bleach being cleaned. We ran to the store and bought pre-made salt water, which is at a little lower salinity, but we figured it couldn't hurt to drop it a little bit. We also immediately placed copper in the water, not knowing yet if we were dealing with ick or velvet. If I'd been able to find the article I'd seen previously on velvet, I would have done a freshwater dip on them ASAP, but I didn't find it until later. With all of the medication we have on hand, formalin and acroflavin are not among them which are essential for helping stop velvet if there's any chance at all to save the fish. I can never find either of those at my local store. We do have antibiotics, but this disease was way ahead of us. By 5.30 Saturday morning, about 12 hours later, the tang was deceased. The clowns continue to hang in there, but I don't hold out much hope for them without having the medicine they need. When the store is open today, I'm going on a medicinal hunt. 
I hope that this video serves as a reminder to everyone that there is no such thing as a foolproof source for purchasing livestock. If you don't want this ending up in your display tank and wiping out your fish, you need to quarantine. Our biggest task now is going to be trying to save the clowns and making sure that we don't cross-contaminate this into the display tank. I would absolutely cry. Quarantine doesn't have to be hard, and in the coming weeks we'll show you some videos posted about how we go about our tank transfers. We'll walk you through it step by step. In the meantime, here are the important things you should know about marine velvet. Number one, it moves fast. By the time you see symptoms like this, most often it's too late to save the fish. To try and save them, you can do the following. Remove them from the infected tank immediately. Perform a five minute RODI water dip. Yes, it seems like a lot. Aerate the water well before you start and take them out if they show signs of distress. Also make sure the temperature matches the water they were in. Next, you'll have to give them a bath in one of the medicines that I mentioned previously. Details on this are found in the article that I'll be referencing below. Number four, place them into a copper treated tank at medicinal levels. And be sure to treat them with antibiotics as they heal to avoid secondary infections. You'll have to run the tank fallow for at least six weeks, so a hospital tank is going to be necessary for your fish. Now, I cannot take credit for these instructions. They come from the amazing community on Reef to Reef forums, and I highly advise you to read the more in-depth article by Humblefish. For us, never one to waste a good fallow period. We'll be getting some more snails and micro hermits into that quarantine tank so that they can be ready for the 210, I suppose. Hang in there, everybody.